welcome you to New Beginnings Church of the Big Ben. Amen. A church you can call home where we honor God, love families, serve others, and we pursue excellence. A place where we have a passion for God and a passion for souls. On a daily basis, we should be winning souls for the kingdom of God. Amen. And you're part of that. You share with people. You are out there. And I say it, say it over and over and over all the time. You're the closest thing to a Bible. Some people will be around. You're the closest thing to a Bible. Some people will hear and be around. So don't be silent, you know. When they ask you things, share with them. Amen. Hallelujah. We know we're going to be talking about the joy of the Lord too. And, that, you know, you, the joy of the Lord should be just jumping out of you. You should be bubbling. You know, because the greater one is in me. You know, I'm not full of the world. I'm full of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So we want to welcome all our NBC family, all visitors, and all of you that are joining us by audio and video. All we ask you to do is prepare yourself to receive. God has something for you. Don't release him. Don't let him go. And say, Lord, you got something for me. And I want it. And he wants to give it to you. But we have to listen what he's got for us. So today we're going to be talking about, don't forget joy too. Amen. It says, again, Nehemiah 8.10, which is our text, says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we need strength. I tell you, I, I say it all the time. Jesus needed strength. Because he knew when he came that he was going to be sacrificed. And I guarantee you, none of us are waiting in line to be sacrificed. He knew he was going to be sacrificed. And I'm sure he spent many time with the Father, you know, just saying, Lord, I need, Father, I need your strength. If Jesus needed strength, guess what? <laughs> we need it on a daily basis. Because you go out into the world. Don't get, let the world get, <laughs> uh, get full of the world. You let them know about your God. Amen. Because if you don't, they'll let you have the world. Amen. And they'll let you know everything about them. The doom and gloom and everything else. You know, the media out there, the news out there, it's all doom and gloom. It's all negative. You're the only positive thing when people are around. So why hold it in when you can share it with them? Amen. Ooh, I'm excited. So anyway, Lord's not finished with you. He's got great plans for you. He's got great plans for you. None of them include defeat. None of them include losing. It's all about winning. It's all about stepping out for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So the main thing is this. you got to make yourself available. And know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Again, strength is in the Word. Amen. He strengthens us. Lord, I need your strength. He will. He'll strengthen you. But you will know. That's what we need. We need relationship. We need to stay in tune with Him. Amen. And that's the main thing is talk about relationship. Greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. I'm a winner. I'm a champion. And I'm an overcomer. And I'm going to stay full of joy and do for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, before we uh, do anything else, grab your Bible, soldier of God, and let's say make this declaration together. Amen. Here we go. This is my Bible. I am what he says I am. I have what he says I have. I can do what he says I can do today. I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. And I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. My mind is alert. You know what? Your mind is alert. Your mind is going 100 miles an hour. Still, that's the battlefield. Because the enemy can't make you do anything, but he can put thoughts in there. And you hear these thoughts as you go out into the world. You hear them. You hear things. But you got to renew your mind with the Word of God. Amen. And get yourself going right. Instead of going the wrong way, you want to get in the right way and stay in the right way in the way God wants you to go. Amen. Whew. He puts you here and He wants you to do for Him. So praise God. Don't forget to stay joyful. Stay full of joy. Believers should be Again, believers should be the most joyful people in the world. Why? Because we know the truth. We should know the truth. We know the truth, and it's going to set us free. We know what's going to happen. We know that we're just, uh, <clears throat> this is not our home. We know that we're just passing through. We know heaven is our home. So, we shouldn't be the saddest people. We should be the happiest people. We should be the most joyful people there is. And you know, it should be showing and the people in the world to see it, and man, they want to receive it. They want it's contagious, and they want some of that. But 
They want to know why you're so joyful. And when they ask you this question, you let them know. Because Jesus, because I have Jesus, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And he can be yours too. And share, don't be ashamed. Because they're not ashamed when they share all kind of garbage with you. And they'll let you know things you don't want to hear. Or you'll hear things you don't want to know. But still, you can renew your mind. We're, to be, uh, we're, we're too blessed to be stressed. We're too blessed to be sad. We're too blessed to be disappointed. We're too blessed to be lonely. We're too blessed to be in the dumps. Why are you in the dumps? Remember the prodigal son? He found himself in the hog pen, in the mud, eating with the pigs. Man, he says, I can do better at father's house. Yeah. All of us. Man, if you haven't accepted Jesus yet, if you haven't received him as your Lord and Savior, it's time you stop running. And it's time you say, you know what? I'm tired of the hog pen. It's time to go back home to Jesus. Amen. It's time. What's keeping you so long? Amen. You're the one that's holding yourself back. He's not holding you. And the problem's not, not with him. The problem is with us. We got to make this right. Amen. All you got to do is repent. Lord, I sin against you. Come in my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And you know what? He'll receive you today. So don't put it off in another day. Today is the day the Lord has made. And He wants you back today. Amen. You can come back home today. Don't stay. <laughs> Try to please people. Be a God pleaser. Receive Him now as you want to say. Ephesians 4 and 6 says this in the other 5. He says, Do not be anxious, nervous, concerned, fearful, or uneasy, or worried, bothered, troubled, upset about anything. But in everything, in every circumstances and situations, by prayer and pe petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your special request known to God. Amen. You, you pay the price. So you don't have to go through this. Amen. So don't be anxious, you know. He don't want you to be there. You know, when you're anxious, is when you're not serving Him. When you're lost. When, 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 when you don't know what else to do. But you got Jesus. Think about him. Renew your mind. Renew your mind so that you can be in tune with him and stay joyful. Amen. First Peter 5 and 7 says this in the King James. Casting all cares, upkeep, all repair, and overhaul on him because he cares about you. When we become Christians, everything is great. When, we, when our priority change, joy, happiness go out, the world comes in. You give it up. You released it. You let it go. Don't do that. <clears throat> Newness goes out and the old comes back. The old ways, the world's ways, the sinful ways, old habits, old things, just it's just going to embrace you once again. If you allow yourself, don't allow yourself. Old friends, stay full, stay connected, and renew your mind. Because it's going to be there and you're going to think about it. But don't give in to it. Amen. A greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Too many Christians struggle through life. Too many Christians live a sad, defeated life. This shouldn't be. If you're a Christian, you should know your God. And if you know your God, you know you're, you're victorious. You can have joy. You can have peace. You can have all these things. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. David said, who is this Goliath? You know, hey, my God is greater than this Goliath. My God is greater than any giants coming against you. And they'll come against you. But you got to know who you are. And you got to know who's backing you. And my God is with me. Amen. He says he never leaves you nor forsake you. He don't leave us. We leave him. So it's, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Renew your mind and stay in your mission. And stay in your walk, in your Christian walk. Amen. Too many Christians living a sad life. Uh, we should be joyful. We should be happy. We should be shouting victory. But instead, we're sad, struggling, and defeated. If we choose to do this, you don't have to. You know, it's just like buying yourself a brand new car <laughs> and walking. You got a car. It'll take you wherever you want to go. It's a great tool. But if, if you don't get in it and use it, 
It's no good for you. So what's good for you? You got, you got Jesus who made a way for us. Amen. When you get in Him and you're accepting or receiving, man, you got things a whole lot easier. He made it a whole lot easier for us if we use it and we take and live for Him. Otherwise, you're going to be defeated. So why be the Christian if you're not living the Christian life? We just, we're just not Christians on Sunday mornings. We're not just Christians on, on Wednesday night for Bible study. <laughs> Christians all the time. Amen. And we got to stand on the Word and we got to stay full of the Word. When you stay full, you can go places. That brand new car you got, you got to put some fuel in it to go anywhere. If you don't put no fuel in it, you can't use it. It's a great tool, but it's no good for you if you don't put fuel in it. Well, we got to put some fuel in it. We got to get some word in us. Amen. Because when you put the word in you, it's going to make you go. And it's going to make you go in faith and step out in faith and not fear. When you don't have the word, that fear is going to take you. And it's going to stop you. And it's going to just, you're going to be, you're going to struggle. And you're going to be fearful. But you shouldn't. Get the word in you. That's the fuel we need. We're going to keep those spiritual uh, fuels going. Amen. Then we can go places and we can share Jesus with whoever he wants you to share. And it says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That means every, all people. Again, Nehemiah 8, 10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. And we do have uh, the scripture here. It says, Nehemiah 8, 10 says, Then he said unto them, Go into all the world and eat the fat. And drink the sweet and uh, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this is a day, for this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither but be ye uh, sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. It's right there. I'm the B part, I just want to share the B part with you. And that's the bottom part. He says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We need, we need his joy. We need his strength. Amen. It says, start celebrating your lives. Be joyful. Be happy. Don't endure your days. Enjoy your days. What did he say in Psalms 118, 24? He says, the joy of the Lord, I mean, excuse me. He says, this is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. So, he just didn't say to endure your days. He says, enjoy your days. Rejoice in your days. Smile and give your face a, a needed lift. Some of us have been frowning too long. We need to get rid of that frown. Give yourself a spiritual high. Stay high with the most high. Yeah, that's the best high you can have. Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Give with Christian friends and enjoy. Give free. You laugh. Smile. And Psalms 34 and 8 says this. New Living Translation says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joy of those who take refuge in Him. This one says, uh, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good, blessed, happy, fortunate. To be envied is the man who trusts and takes refuge in Him. Amen. We got scriptures. Write them down. You know, go, go, go study them. And get, not only study them, get them in you. Meditate on them. Study them. So when you need to release them, they're there for you. Don't say, well, you know, I can't read the Bible. I can't do this. I can't do that. The Bible says that we can do all things through Christ. Quit confessing the wrong things and start confessing the right things. Remember, confess your say so. Confess, confess faith-filled words and speak them out. Amen. Is the word's going to go out and accomplish what God sends it out to do. That's that's something to remember. Psalms twenty. 37 and 4 says, Delight, enjoy yourself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. This one goes 37, 4 and 5. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you, He shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Amen. Leave it there. He'll bring it to pass. It's going to come to pass. Just have peace, have patience, <laughs> and, and, and it's good. It's, good. it's going to happen. Just trust. Trust Him. You mean you can trust Him. Praise God. Proverbs 17, 20, 22. Uh, we talked about, we kind of reviewing some of these from last week, but it says, New Living Translation says, 
A cheerful, happy, joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. This one says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps the person's strength. Amen. Some of us, <laughs> we need to stop being so doom and gloom, so sad. The easy to read version says, happiness is good medicine. Listen, the sorrow is a disease. Amen. If you're going to fight against your body and you're going to start feeling bad. Why? Because we're holding on to this uh, sadness. Amen. We're holding on to this uh, sorrow. Every morning when you wake up, I encourage you to declare out loud, I'm going to enjoy this day. Why? Because Psalms 118.24 says, this is the day the Lord has made. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Don't be sad. Don't, don't, don't let your mind wander off, you know, and say, well, I've got so many things to do. And when you start thinking about all the priorities and sad things you got to do, you're going to be sad and you're going to be doom and gloom. Instead, rejoice and be glad in it. The greater one is in you. Amen. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Thank you, Lord. See yourself the way he sees you. Amen. He sees you a winner. He sees you that champion that you are. Not what the world says. Not what people say. Not what brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so or what the family says. But what the word of God says. This is for you. Amen. This is your Christian walk. John 15, 11 says this in the Amplified. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight, excuse me, my joy and delight, happiness may be in you. And that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. It's going to overflow. You know, you stay full of that. And it's going to overflow. It says, your cup runneth over. You know, let it flow over because it's contagious. And people are going to see it. And they want what you've got. Amen. They're going to get it. So you got to share it, you know. It's there for you. Decide to be joyful and happy and smile right where you are. Listen, bloom where God plants you. Bloom where God puts you. Bloom where God sets you. Amen. Too many of us are sad because of the circumstances. We're sad because of where we are and we don't like where we are. You know, when your mind and your heart is on Him, you're going to bloom wherever he sends you. And that's the main thing to do. Amen. Quit trying to please yourself. Quit trying to please the world. Just know God sent me here and I'm going to rejoice and be glad. <coughs> and I'm going to bloom. You know, I've said it so many times. But you see a little flower? You see a seed go flows in the air. And it flows and it drops somewhere. And wherever it drops... So there's soil there and God's going to water it and it's going to grow. And you know what? It could be in a crack on, on the sidewalk. It could be on a rooftop. It could be somewhere. Strange place. But you know what? That little seed fell. And that little seed grows. And that little seed, you know what? It's going to bloom and you're going to see a beautiful flower. And that's what he wants us to do. Wherever he sits us, wherever he sends us, you know, we, he wants us to bloom. And people are going to see the beauty. Amen. Say, wow. What is it about you? It's him. Him. That's that's what it is. It's about it's him. So just bloom where God sets you. Make a firm decision to enjoy your daily walk with him. When you do, you'll begin to experience the abundant life he wants us to have. John 10.10 10 says, and the latter part says, well, first it says, it becomes a steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, have it more joyful. And that's what he wants us to do. Amen. We choose to go a different way. And if we choose to go a different route than what God wants us to do, we're going to be, be sad and doom and gloom. Amen. And it's going to make, it's going to be harder on us. But you know, we got to get right with him and and follow that road that he wants us to take. Because he's got a, a, a mission for you. And when you realize that you have a call in your life. And that, that he's got a mission for you. And he's equipped you. And he's uh, uh, anointed you. Then you, you can't miss it. The only thing that's going to miss is people. They're no longer holding you back. 
distractions no longer holding you back. You're going to press on in the things of God. Amen. And accomplish what he wants you to do. Amen. John, well, I already said John 10, 10. He comes to the enemy. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus says, I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Psalm 100 says this. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Amen. We're talking about joy. And we can't get away from it. Make you make this joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, Psalms uh, 16 11 says in New King James, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. You want to be in the presence of God? There's fullness of joy. At your right hands are pleasure forevermore. Remember, we're just passing through this world. <laughs> we're not, we don't belong here. We're on our way to heaven. Amen. And we're going to shout victory. Thank you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> While we're here, we're going to be joyful in doing what God wants us to do. And bring all the people we can bring with us. And get them on God's team. Not the enemy's teams. You know what? There's only two places to go. You're either going up or you're going down. But you know, you can make a difference. And you can reach your people around you. Wherever you live. Wherever you shop. Wherever you, you happen to work at. You can reach people there. You know, you're not excluded. He wants to involve you. Again, John 4, 4 says this. And we sang this this morning. It was great. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. So, there's nothing sad about it. You know, everybody was sad when they saw Jesus, you know, die. But they were happy when they say, the master's rose. He told us he was going to rise again. And he rose. Amen. First uh, Thessalonians 5.16 in the New Living Version says this. Be full of joy all the time. The New King James says this. Rejoice always. Amen. So we need to practice this. What do we have up here? This is Psalms 100, 1 through 5. We, we read this all the time. I've got it here too. I'll read it to you from here. It says. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands serve the Lord with gladness. Not sadness. Some of us, you know, if you're serving the Lord with sadness, people are going to see that. They don't want that. We serve the Lord with gladness, coming for His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God, and is He made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, enter His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. Since for the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His Truth endureth to all generations. Amen. So praise God. Thank you, Lord. I like that. I enjoy that. Let me see where I was here. Here's John 3.16. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting, joyful, I put that in, joyful life. An everlasting, joyful life. I guarantee you're going to heaven. You ain't going to be sad, doom, or gloom in heaven. They ain't none of that up there. It's going to be a joyful life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 95 and 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And let us shout joyfully with him or to him with psalms. So it's okay to sing to him. Don't hold back. Rejoice. Amen. He wants us to sing. Praise and worship is, is, is a powerful weapon. The enemy don't like. Remember Lucifer used to be the archangel. And he used to be over the praise or the choir there. But he tried to be over God and God sent him down. I mean he shot him out of heaven just like a lightning. <laughs> People including believers spend most of their lifetime, most of their days, most of their life. Uh, oh, excuse me. They spend most of their time, their days and their lives defeated we kind of went over some of this last week defeated overpowered overcome overwhelmed and crushed you know if you're not renewing yourself to the things of God if you're not renewing yourself this is what you're going to feel like you're going to feel de defeated beaten overpowered uptight tense anxious and worried 
He says, cast it on me, give it to me. Don't try to do it and deal with it yourself. He knows what's best for you. And he already told us what to do. Give it to him. Why are you still holding on to it? So I don't want to be uptight. I don't want to be tense. I don't want to be anxious for nothing. You want to be upset, sad, troubled, full of cares. Why are you still holding on to what he said, give me? Amen. We can we face these things on a daily basis. Say, Lord, I'm giving you these. Thank you for setting me free. Overstressed, burdened, overloaded, <clears throat> outstretched. We need to let go and not be so overloaded. Amen. Discouraged, cast down, depressed. You'd be surprised how many people I hear say that, you know, they're depressed, lonely. And you need to fall in love with your God and spend time with Him and know what the Word of God says about you so that you can overcome these things. Amen. And let that joy come in you. And let the joy overtake you. Sad, unsad, um, unhappy, miserable, depressed, gloomy, dejected. That's not for us, church. <laughs> Because their joy, their happiness, and their smile is based entirely on circumstances. Sometimes wrong jobs, sometimes wrong career, relationships, friends, or bad habits. And we have to be careful for that. First Peter 5 and 7 again in the expanded Bible says, Give all your worries to Him. Cast all your anxieties on Him because He cares about you. If He's telling you, told you this over and over, we need to take it into heart. We need to take it and use it and let it go. He can, he knows what to do with it. He's already done something with it. But we got to give it to him. If not, it's just going to stay there. You know, at home, you know when you need to dump your trash. Because your trash can is full. Oh, we need to empty ourselves to him and give him all that trash. And leave it there and not take it back. Because the battlefield, the mind... You're going to start thinking it over, over and over, and rehash it. Just give it to him and leave it there. It says, I, I gave it. I threw it out. I gave it to God. So I'm not taking it back. He knows what to do with it. You don't. And it's causing problems for you. Psalms 52 uh, and 22 in the expanded Bible again says, Give, cast, throw your worries, your burdens, that which he has given you to the Lord. He will take care of us. He will take care of and sustain you. He will uh, never let good, righteous people down or be moved. Amen. We just got to know to give it to him. Why lose your joy and your smile when you can cast and give it to him? Stay joyful. Keep your smile. Don't let them go. Amen. Sometimes we just take it for granted. Yeah. Just give it up. Don't give it up. Stay joyful. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Keep your spirit joyful, happy, and smiling. Keep them spiritual batteries charged up all the time. How do I do this? Getting in the Word. Studying. Spending time with Him. And those batteries just stay up. We need to. Again, that car you have, <laughs> it needs a battery or it ain't going nowhere. You keep that battery charged and you can enjoy that car. We need to keep our spiritual spiritual batteries charged all the time. You let them drain and you're going to be doom and gloom. Amen. No frowns, smiles only. Why? <laughs> we fight that spiritual battle daily. Whether you know it or not. It's time that you know, but it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a battle. It's a spiritual battle, and you can't deal with it in the flesh. If you kind of deal with it in the flesh, you're defeated because it's a spirit, a spiritual battle. You need the word of God. Ephesians uh, six and twelve in the expanded Bible says, "For our fight, our conflict, struggle is not against people on earth." flesh and blood, but against the rulers and authority and the powers of cosmic powers, rulers of this uh, dark world. Mm -hmm. Against spiritual powers of evil 
in the heavenly places, in the heavenly world, or the realms of the places. So people get happy and be joyful, because God wants us to be joyful. And we can do all things through Him. So it's not wrong to be happy. And like I said, being happy, being joyful is contagious. People want to know, and people want it. Because there's too many sad people out there in doom and gloom, you know, going the wrong way. It's time that we share these things with them. Things go, <laughs> things uh, going the wrong, uh, our way is nice and easy and comfy. No problem, no care, no anxiety. It's time that we uh, let the Lord know that we love Him and share His love and share His joy with other people. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Steps of keeping your joy. We're going to get into this and we probably have a, don't forget your joy, three next week. <laughs> Be led by the Holy Spirit. Keep your joy by allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you in us in the way that we should go. There's a way for us. There's a way, but we need to go the right way. We need to go God's way. Because, you know, <laughs> the world's going one way. God wants us to go another way. But we need to go His way. And you know, sometimes the crowd is going the wrong way. Don't mean you got to stay with the crowd. You just go with God wants says to go. And we're going His way. Proverbs 16 and 9 says, A man's heart plans his way, but God, but the Lord directs his steps. And the easier read version says, Proverbs 16 and 9 says, People can plan what they want to do, but it's the Lord who guides and directs their steps. So you know, this is, what we need on a daily basis. Lord, do you know my steps? I need your guidance, Lord. And he will. He's there for you. You see what else you got here? I've got some good ones for you. Don't let the devil steal your joy. He will. Amen. I've got, I think I read you this last week. I've got it here. It says, don't let your past People and their words stop the destiny God has for you. Amen. Because it will if you allow it. Don't let someone who gave up on their dreams talk you out of your dream. Amen. God has to call for you. Keep on coming. Don't let anything or anyone steal your joy. And they will if you let it. Amen. Keep going. Separate yourself from the blessing blockers and believe me there's lots of them out there amen and you got to stay <laughs> full and you got to stay up and up and you got to stay charged otherwise the blessing blockers are going to block you each and every time and the enemy has many 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 of these amen it says they purposely distract you with sin mm -hmm. drama and fear because they can't stand to see you happy people just don't want to see you happy. People don't want to see you delivered. Amen. They 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 want they want you down and out. They want you in the dumps. And so you don't have to be like the world. You don't have to be like them. You can be free. And you when you share with them, you just let them know. You don't have to be that way. God can God wants to set you free. And you can be free. It's the truth that you know the word is going to set you free. That's what the word of God says. Many complain life is boring. They need to check their priorities again. Believers, Jesus first. Dethrone yourself, put Jesus on the throne. Matthew 6, 33. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Get back in relationship with him. Let go and let God. You know, when you cast all those cares on him... <laughs> You're getting off the throne, you know, and, and let God, let, let, let go and let God. Because he knows what to do, and we don't. Amen. He's got other things for us. We're too busy fighting things that we don't, want to, we don't need to fight. Give it to him and press on with what he wants you to do. Life is not boring. Amen. Again, change your priorities. Life is, is not boring. Be led by the Holy Spirit. He'll make the changes. You will, lose, you will lose your joy if you're not willing to make these changes. 
step out of your boat or your comfort area and be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The prodigal son finally realized, you know, hey, I could do better at Father's house. Wow, the light came on. The light needs to come on for all of us to say, hey, we need God's way and not the world's ways. Amen. I'm tired of magnifying the problem and say, I'm magnifying my God. When you do this and you change this, you know, things are going to change. And change is good for us. Uncomplicate your life. We need to do this. Simplify it. Too busy. Doing too much. Satan complicates your life. How's this? He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. You're too busy doing too much. Amen. What is it you want me to do, Lord? As long as you have your priorities in order, seeking Him first. Keep you too busy to enjoy all God's blessings. Enjoy your relationship with Him. Enjoy time with your spouse, your family, your friends. Take time to laugh and smile. We need more of this. Amen. I mean, there's plenty of doom and gloom out there. Enjoy the life He has given us. He says, <clears throat> we can enjoy our life. He says, we can do all things through Christ. You know, quit stop say, or stop saying, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. You can't do it, but He can. He's already done it. All we need to do is get lined up with the Word of God and lined up with Him and start doing what the Word tells us to do. When we do this, we can do this. <clears throat> Amen. So praise God. We're going to be stopping here. But He wants us to be uh, joyful. He wants us to be bold. Amen. Let's see. Remember, enjoying the abundant life Jesus died to give you is based on the decision you make, not on the circumstances. You make this decision to receive Him as your Lord and Savior and to follow His Word and follow what He wants you to do, not what the world says and not the easy way out. You know, If you want the easy way out, you choose His way because His way is already there for us. But if you want to choose your way, or the world's way, it's rough and tough. Joy is God gives to us, but some of us have never even opened the package. He's given us this, and He's given it to us, but we're not receiving it. It's time to receive it. Amen? So praise God. Let's remember this. He is the glory and the lifter of our hands. So praise God. Thank you, Lord. We want to start celebrating with Him. We want to be joyful with Him. Amen? So the joy of the Lord, let the joy of the Lord be your strength today, each and every day. Not just once in a while, you know, <laughs> but every day. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Did you receive? Yes, sir. I received too. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Some of you are watching and uh, you're still running. It's time to come to Him. All you need to do is just admit it, you know. Admit it, quit it, and uh, just say, Lord, I've sinned against you. I repent. Come to my life. Be my Lord and Savior. And he will. Quit running. He don't want you to run. Amen. You know, you're dining out. And you've been doing this for yourself all the time. And, and you're losing. And it's time to win. Amen. But you got to get on his side. The winning side. So, receive him. And he's not going to turn you down. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Some of you, uh, sickness in your body. And, uh, what I do when I don't feel well. I just say, by Jesus Christ, I'm healed. That's what the Word of God says. So I confess it. So body line up with the Word of God and receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Whatever malfunctions, whatever is not working right, we just, Lord, we just thank you that we're healed right now. We receive your healing. We receive Jesus' healing right now in our body. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. It says, lay hands on the sick and it's, you shall recover. So, I'm believing it, and I'm receiving it in me. Thank you, Lord. And it's time to give. Amen. So just go to our screen here, our website, nbcbigband.com, and hit that donate button. And if you're mailing it, NBC PO Box 252, Martha, Texas, 79843. And cash out, go to New Beginnings Church of the Big Band. God loves you, and we love you. God bless you. Amen.